Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, let's talk about the bags that have been 2023, the bags that I have bought in 2023, and the bags that I have sold in 2023. These numbers are actually surprisingly close together, but when we get to the end, stay tuned and I will reveal how many I have bought and how many I have sold. Starting with the bag that I have bought in 2023, and this has to be one of my absolute favorite bags in my whole collection, even though some of you guys doubted this a little bit whenever I unboxed this handbag earlier on in the year, but it is the Louis Vuitton Petite Mal in the Fuchsia Epi Leather. I absolutely adore this bag. This bag is quite an old one. This was released quite some time ago. It is one of the older style Petite Mal. If you buy one now, which is one of the ones up on this shelf, it's very slightly bigger. There's not a huge amount of difference. It's not as if you're going to fit loads in that and nothing in this, but there is a slight difference in how wide they are and what can fit in them. This is one of the older ones. It is the Epi Leather, which is pretty indestructible. And what I loved about this bag and why I had to track this down on the pre-loved resale market was the fuchsia epi leather. I absolutely love it. This is one of those bags that at the time that it came out I really really wanted it. I couldn't afford it and then I spent time trying to find it. I found a lot of the red ones on the resale market before I found the fuchsia pink but I stayed true to what I was looking for and this has to be one of my best purchases of 2023. Now let's go with one of the bags that I have sold this year and number one is the Louis Vuitton loop bag in the black denim. I really wanted to love this bag. I have a review video on this bag if you are considering the Louis Vuitton loop bag and I think I've titled it a review of the annoying loop bag. It's just difficult to use. I find when I wore it crossbody because the shape of the bag is a loop I found it quite awkward with the zip, getting the zip to move easily and smoothly while I was wearing it. And I found that I didn't love the bag enough to cope with the annoyance. I have other bags like the mini cap scenes, which is sitting over here, which is very annoying to use, but I love it so much I've got over that. With the lip bag, I just couldn't. I didn't. I just, there was something that just, ugh, I couldn't get past. I did love the look of it though. I thought it looked really edgy. And when I wore it with a black leather jacket, I thought it was... A really cool look but I just didn't love it enough to keep it and it is the first of the bags in 2023 that had to go and make way for some of these new ones. Number two on the bags I have bought this year <laughs> and it's one of my favorites you're going to hear that a lot this year because I have bought some bags that I really really love this year and number two is this it is the Chanel mini rectangle in the raffia this also was a pre-loved bag this also took me a while to track it down I bought this from Bagista in the UK it is orangey red paint across the raffia this piping on the side is orange leather it's an orangey red color the leather is along here and on the turn lock but all of these are painted stripes across the raffia. It does have the Mona Lisa pocket on the back and on the inside it is the traditional mini rectangle although it has the CC on this which I actually really like and I know you don't really see this and you don't see it really open but I really like the CC embroidered on the top flap here and then it is just one open space with the slip pocket and the zip pocket on the back. Love it absolutely love this bag, wore this bag recently whenever I was in London. It's probably coming to the end of its use for this year because we're going into autumn to winter. There's probably not going to be that many dry days that I can wear this but definitely no regrets on this. I'm very glad that I tracked this down and for me this has been another total win. Number two of the bags I have sold and this is a bag that I kept for far longer than I probably should have because I really wanted it to work and I really wanted to love it and I didn't want to give up on it. But no matter how many times I tried, I just couldn't bring myself to love the Chanel Gabrielle bag enough. And with the price of Chanel bags, especially when you add on the very expensive strap for the Gabrielle to be sitting on a shelf and not being used, it was just too much money. I tried. I gave myself an extra period of time before I decided to sell it. I tried to wear it. I tried to love it. I just didn't enough compared to other bags that I had and I would have went for the other bags before the Gabrielle. So that's another one of the bags that had to be sold to make way for all of these new ones coming in. Number three of the bags I have bought this year and this bag has led to 
quite a number of videos on my channel where I have effectively been soul searching and trying to figure out and get to the bottom of my shopping habits, trying to take a pause on my shopping habits, trying to reconsider, doing a whole lot of inner searching or trying to sort out my own mind. And it is of course the Green Midi Fendi Baguette. I bought this bag on a total whim, saw it, bought it and sold it before I'd even used it. I sold it very, very quickly after buying it. And that was a real wake up call for me. It really did make me realize that I must not have loved that bag enough in the first place to buy it. If I then turned around and sold it very quickly without really much angst, because I saw another bag that I wanted more and that's what led to me taking a break from buying handbags. I made a video on why I wasn't buying luxury designer handbags anymore and I didn't buy any for four months. Now I appreciate four months is not a huge amount of time for most normal people but I was buying handbags at that point excessively and rapidly and numerous in a month and I needed to pause and I needed to really reevaluate what was here. So I sold that bag on very quickly to somebody who's absolutely loving it. She's in a much better home than she would have been here and and then I didn't buy for four months. I did then buy when I was in London. I've made videos and all of that and I will be sharing the bag that came in with you. But this is the one that really led to that period of reflection and I don't regret buying it because I sold it on very, very quickly to somebody who really wanted it and couldn't get it where they lived. So it worked out well in the end. But should I have bought that bag in the first place? No, I shouldn't have. That bag should, I, should, I shouldn't have bought it. It was a mistake, it was a regret. If it, if it had been staying with me, I make mistakes. Sometimes I'm too impulsive. I buy things, they don't work out or I see something else. I'm human, I make mistakes. And that was definitely one of them. Number three on the bags that I have sold this year is one, the one of these bags which is actually still for sale and it is for sale with Rod at the Lux Theory. And it is the coral co colored Chanel flat bag with the chain. I love the chain on this bag. I love the color of this bag. It sat perfectly crossbody. I just don't know why I didn't use this bag. I bought this bag as my birthday bag. I kept it, I had bought it and kept it unboxed for quite a while. That was probably easier than it should have been and maybe should have been a warning for me. Then when I did unbox it, I never used it, not even once. When I sold that bag or when I sent it to Rod to be sold, cause it's still for sale, it was in perfectly brand new condition. Never ever worn. I think I loved the chain. <laughs> And I bought it because I loved the look of the chain. I remember being in Dublin. I got caught up in the moment a bit. I probably do regret buying this one. I think if I had listened very carefully to my gut feeling at the time, I would have known that that bag, I loved it, but I didn't need to buy it. I should have loved it from afar and left it on the shelf. That was a buying mistake that I made. That is a regret that I've made. Again, as I said, I'm human, I make mistakes and that one just didn't work out and it's currently for sale, it has to go because Chanel bags for me are too expensive to keep when I figure out that I have made a mistake and I don't love them enough or I'm not using them and I have to move them on. Back to the positive side of this video because that was a little bit depressing. And number four of the bags that I have bought this year in 2023 is the Dior saddlebag in bright bright yellow. This bag is a stunner but she is difficult to style. I love her, she's not going anywhere. I love the saddle bag. This is the only bright yellow bag that I have and I love the shape of her. I think she is fabulous both on a sunny day but she also works really well with a grey pinstripe suit on a darker day. She just brightens it up and the leather is green leather so she's fine in the rain. But I have to admit to this bag being one of the bags in my collection that I find harder to style than most of the others. It's one that I can put together with, le with less looks and that's something I'm aware of but I don't regret it. I don't regret buying it. I still love it. It's not for sale. It's staying. I just, I think it's so cool. I'm a lover of the saddlebag. I think the saddlebag is a really cool bag. I think it's a vibe. I know that not everybody loves the saddlebag. I know some people think it looks like a kidney bean. I know some people think, what are you doing with that? I know, I get it. I get that not everybody is gonna love all of my bags. And I think that's what's fun and refreshing about fashion and handbags that we all have different tastes. But this one, definitely not a regret. I got it before 
the price increase. I maybe actually got it two price increases ago for Dior. So I, yeah, no regrets, but definitely one that's a little bit harder to put together with an outfit than the vast majority of the others. Number four on the bags that I have sold this year, and we're not gonna talk too long about it because it is the green Fendi midi baguette, which we already discussed. Because I bought it and sold it this year, I actually bought it and sold it within a number of weeks. And I think I have tortured myself enough about that, so we're not gonna go any more into that in this video. So we're gonna go back to number five of the bags that I have bought this year, and that is the Louis Vuitton Mini Capucines in the stunning, stunning pink with the enamel handle. And it is, of course, this beauty. The color of this bag, it's chef's kiss. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a stunning, stunning, stunning bag. There is the lighter rose ballerine pink on the flap, which has the fleur-de-lis on the end of it, as all of the Capucines do. It has the rose ballerine in the Louis Vuitton here, has the little feet. It does come with the thinner, detachable, adjustable crossbody strap. I don't really wear these crossbody though. I generally wear these handheld. I know Meredith doesn't wear hers crossbody either. Deb does, it's what works for you. I think I have worn all of my Capucines combined much more handheld than I have crossbody. This one has a beautiful, beautiful striking interior. This is just a stunning, stunning print. And then what I think really makes this bag is this enamel handle. This is all of these different pieces put together and then held together with the gold. And I was very helpfully educated on this by you wonderful people, that this is to reflect the Japanese art of repairing broken pottery. When the pieces are put back together and gold is used to put them together and make something new from what was broken. And I love, love the ethos behind that. And I think it makes this bag even more special. She's absolutely beautiful. I actually haven't used this one yet but that's not to say that she's a regret. She's not, I love her. She is staying, I think she's stunning. She just has a lot of other pink bags around her, but I think this one, oh, beautiful. Number five of the bags that I have sold in 2023, and this one caused a little bit of upset. This surprised quite a few of you, shocked quite a few of you, and there's quite a few of you that are upset that this bag is no longer in my collection. And also a number of you would have loved the opportunity to buy this bag, and this bag did go to one of you, and it is the Louis Vuitton Baguette in the multicolor. I adored the multicolor on this bag, but I just didn't love the actual bag. The multicolor Zucca print put together caught me and caught my attention because I loved the multicolor colors together. I didn't like the brownie caramel color in the background. I found the medium size in the baguette when it is a canvas baguette which is structured to be a little bit big. I definitely didn't love it as much as I do say the sequence baguette down here which is also the regular size but is a lot more sloppy and falls in on itself because it's structured and I don't put a liner in it. I didn't love the regular size as much as that one. Definitely didn't. And I didn't love the color in the background. And I don't know if that's what put me off the bag in general. I'm surprised I sold that bag. I'm surprised as well as you guys being surprised. I'm surprised I didn't love it more because I loved the FF Multicolor Zucca. Just didn't work and no regrets on selling it. Number six of the bags that I have bought this year. And this has got to be one of the stars of the show of the year, of all the years, of the whole collection. And it is, of course, the mini Lady Dior in the sequined jungle print. I bought this bag when I was in Milan with my husband for his birthday. I am somebody who loves to buy bags or luxury as souvenirs and I, I hear it. I know it's not a fridge magnet, but I love whenever I am somewhere and I'm really enjoying it. I love going shopping in new cities. I love seeing what they have to offer and I love buying bags that are then associated with that trip. And it's another reason why I enjoyed shopping in London so much recently. And I've talked about why I broke my buying ban on that trip. There's a whole video on it and I love the bag that came home. This is another one that in Milan, and now it's not just the hype of the trip because I love this bag, love this bag, but it's all the more special because to me, this is my Milan bag and that's just how my crazy mind works. This one I think has been, it's just a stunner. This is one of those bags of the year. Didn't drop it, Granny. This is one of those bags of the year that's just, she's striking, she's beautiful, she's fabulous, she's been to the pub. <sighs> 
love this bag. The next bag I have sold in 2023, and I think the last bag I have sold in 2023 so far, is the yellow Louis Vuitton twist. And that was sold for one reason and one reason only, because I was buying this. And as I've said earlier, I find bright yellow harder to style. In my wardrobe, I did not need two bright yellow bags. And when I bought the saddle bag, I just preferred the shape of it and I preferred the look of it. I preferred that I could do this with it because I do like my saddle bags to be worn like that as well as wearing them handheld. Don't generally wear them crossbody all that much, but the yellow twist bag went to make way for this one. And that's the only reason, because I love the twist. I think it's underrated and it's a great bag. It was epi leather, which is a very strong, durable leather from Louis Vuitton. But when this one came, the twist had to go. So we now know that I have bought more bags in 2023 that I have sold, but what is the difference? How many more have I bought than sold? And do they cancel each other out? So does it really mean that these are the only new additions because I sold ones for all of those? I could convince myself of many things. See how my mind's working? The next one that I have bought in 2023 is the mini saddlebag from Dior in this bright, bright pink. I think she's fabulous. She is absolutely stunning. She is the mini. My phone fits in with a little bit sticking out, but you can put it in diagonally and this closes perfectly on it. I am going to do a review and a comparison of this bag, show you what fits, show you how she looks cross body and do that with this bag and the regular size saddle bag. So if you're interested in those, that will give you all the information you need. But I think she's absolutely beautiful. I had a mini saddle bag on my wish list for a very long time. When this one came, I just thought this was the one to pull the trigger on. I also really like the blue oblique. And I also, there's a burgundy one out, but I have a large bar burgundy saddlebag. I'm not buying another one. But there's the mini saddlebags I think I could be worried about myself getting addicted to because they're really, really cool. I also really like this bag just held handheld. I like it crossbody. It does come with the strap. I will make that video to show you all about this. But this is the number seven, I think, of the bags that I have bought in 2023. And the last bag which I have bought in 2023, making eight bags which I have bought this year. I've sold six, so I have two more purchases than I've sold. I don't think that's bad. For somebody that used to buy and buy and buy handbags and never sell any, I don't actually think that's bad. I think being two up <laughs> is is I can live with that. I can live with that. And I think I've been sensible for the ones that have made way for the new ones to come in. This is my most recent addition. If you watched my recent unboxing from London, I am in love with this bag. And of course, it is the Fendi sequined baguette in the fuchsia. I think she's absolutely stunning. I think she is just me in a bag. I have a few me's in a bag, but this is definitely one of them. When I saw this bag in person, I went to London specifically to see this bag and to see the mini version. But when I saw this bag in person, huh, she was not staying on the shelf. She just wasn't. She was coming home. I was on a buying pause. I hadn't bought for four months. Didn't care. She was coming home. I was not passing up on this bag for the second time. I had the opportunity to buy it last year. I just, I love her too much. I think she is stunning. And I do get a huge amount of use out of my purple sequence, which is down here. So when the fuchsia come out and had the opportunity to come home, I love her. And she is the last of the bags that I have bought in 2023. Eight purchases, six sold. Let me know what you think. I can live with that. I don't think that's too bad. What do you think of the purchases that I've made this year and what do you think of the bags I've let go? Are there any of the bags I've let go you think I was crazy to let those go to bring in one of those? Or do you think that what I've brought in, and I see a lot of pink down here, is more my collection and fits with me more and maybe was sensible? Let me know your thoughts in the comment box. If you have enjoyed this video at all, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please do consider subscribing. And if you're not done with me yet, I'm going to leave another video for you on the screen to enjoy. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching me. Please take care and I will see you again in the next one.